in today's webinar, we're going to be discussing how you can prosper in these currently volatile markets. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to provide a bit of background as to who I am. For those of you that are not familiar, I do have over 25 years of experience in the financial markets, and a good part of that time was spent uh, on Wall Street. I started out as a trader on the fixed income floor of Goldman Sachs, and then from there I did go on to actually manage two billion in assets, again on fixed income for a large asset management firm in New York City. But things really got exciting for me when I moved out to the West Coast and had the opportunity to join William O'Neill and Company, which is a subsidiary of Investors Business Daily. Some of you may be familiar with that publication. But during my time there, it was for over 15 years, I had the privilege of working with top professional fund managers throughout the world, advising them on the broader markets as well as individual stock selection. And a large part of my time there was also spent uh, really helping these managers understand the O'Neill approach to the markets. As some of you may know, the goal for a lot of his uh, the work there is to uncover and then profitably trade big winning growth stocks that go on to outperform the broader market. So a lot of my time there was spent reviewing charts regularly. Um, Someone mentioned no sound. If someone else, okay, good, Sheldon. Glad to hear you have sound now. So getting back to my time uh, with O'Neill, I was reviewing thousands of charts each and every week, reviewing, uncovering stocks, getting a feel for where the market was, what stocks were exhibiting strength. And to this day, I still go through probably a thousand charts a week. I'm currently with my own investment research firm, MEM Investment Research. I do still work with institutional money managers, but I've broadened out so that I'm now working also with self-directed investors. And that's really quite exciting for me. I have an opportunity now to share my many years of knowledge and experience to help individual investors navigate and profit from the broader markets. For those of you interested in finding out more information, my website is meminvestmentresearch.com and you can get quite a bit more information there if you are uh, interested. So before we begin, uh, it's important that you note I will be showing charts of stocks, indexes, and so forth, but it is solely for educational purposes. It is not for recommendation. So that's something that I did want to point out. And then also, as far as questions, we will have ample time at the end. So if you can hold off on your questions, that would be ideal. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to review what we will be covering today. Um, first off, we will review what exactly this high volatility that we've been experiencing in the markets over the last two and a half months, what exactly is that high volatility telling you? We'll also get more into a description of what volatility is. And then we're also going to review how you can tell using certain signals, how you can tell which direction the markets are going in. The reason we are going to review this is because as a trader, regardless of whether you are trading in high volatility periods or more placid times, the direction of the market is going to be critical for your decision making. You, of course, do not want to be going long while the broader market is in a downtrend. And then likewise, you don't want to short a market that's in a strong uptrend. So being able to decipher uh, how the markets are, are they healthy or not, is going to be really quite important. So we'll review that. And then also, should you purchase uh, safe haven gold stocks? That's something, a question that I've gotten. So it is something that we will go ahead and review as an, uh, a possibility, a way to uh, hedge yourself against this volatility. And then also, we are going to review how your style of investing is really going to uh, 
uh, help you determine a plan during these volatile periods. And with that in mind, I did want to mention that if you have a style of investing that is suited to you, ideally, and this is true for institutional investors as well, because it is your expertise, it is your comfort, you generally are advised to stay with that style of investing just because there is high volatility which can often bring more opportunities uh, you want to be comfortable with what the markets are telling you in your style so if suddenly uh, if you are a longer term investor and you get excited about the intraday swings if it's a style uh, for instance intraday trading is not uh, comfortable for you. Uh, generally speaking, uh, one is advised to stick with your expertise. So we'll go ahead and review the different styles of investing that uh, traders and investors have and how that would impact how you respond to this increased volatility. Lastly, as usual, there will be a very special offer at the end of this presentation, as well as the ability to have any of your questions answered, so I advise you to uh, stick around stick around for the ending. So let's go ahead and start at the very beginning. I mentioned to you that we would be reviewing exactly what is volatility and what is it telling you. So quite simply, volatility is large intraday price swings. And so here I'm citing that it's in stocks. You will also see these large price swings in the broader markets as well. Last year, for instance, 2017, we only had a handful of days that were had intraday swings, a high and a low, that were greater than 1%. And this week alone, we've had uh, three days. So certainly, Certainly, we are in a high volatility period. There are, have been many other days prior to this week, as well as many of you know. So quite simply, that is how volatility is explained. Generally, an intraday swing of 1% or more uh, would de decide whether the markets are being quite volatile. So what is this volatility telling us? And I think it's important that you know what the volatility is telling you so that you can respond accordingly. So basically, the definition of, uh, let's take a look, pardon me, but let's go ahead and talk about what this volatility is telling you. So in particular, the volatility that we're experiencing in the markets is telling you that emotions are the deciding factor for investors' decisions. And by that, I mean that it's not generally strong markets when they are in an uptrend or even in a downtrend. Those time periods are when investors are in unison with their thoughts about the future of the broader markets. But in really high volatile periods, this is when emotions are taking uh, precedence. It is, uh, you'll see fear come into the markets uh, as the markets drop on days where they're about, where we see rallies, greed comes in. And so you're not really getting a nice tight trading range. You're seeing again that this fear is over, I'm sorry, the emotion is overriding. So as we review, we'll take a look at the VIX, which is the volatility index that some of you may be familiar with. And using a volatility index is going to help you gauge whether volatility is currently in the marketplace. Is it at a high? Has it peaked? Are we poised for volatility to die down a bit? So we will get into that as we move on. But generally speaking, high volatility periods are telling you that emotions are running high. And it's not really a sign of a strong market. So uh, let's move on. As mentioned also during these high volatility, it is generally going to be a period of time where, that is surrounded by uncertainty. And that certainly would be the case right now. We have a lot of cross currents, whether it's coming out of Washington, remarks relating to possible trade wars, uh, possible tariffs against China, which is the second largest economy. And then also the concept that interest rates may be rising faster than those 
uh, that investors are comfortable with. So there is quite a bit of uncertainty surrounding the current markets, and that really is one of the drivers for this volatility. So let's take a look at how you can take advantage of this volatility, but before we get into that, I wanted to reiterate what I mentioned before, that volatile markets really are not for everyone. Not everyone is going to have the stomach, if you will, or the tolerance for the risk that is inherent in this volatility. So here's where we can take a minute and talk about your investment style and how you may respond to this increased volatility. Again, if you are a longer term investor, by and large, you may want to sidestep this volatility. Now, I'm not suggesting you go all in to cash. That's usually not a very good idea. But rather than jump in and actively go in and out of the markets, that may not be the best way for you to respond. However, if you are someone that is an intraday trader and you have systems in place, that's going to be absolutely critical that you have stop loss systems in place, then there are definite advantages to you for this volatile time period. So one thing that needs to be mentioned is while you can generate above average profits within a short period of time when the markets are volatile, that's if you're on the right side of the trade. But it's also important to know that if things go the other way, you also stand to generate above average losses. So that's where you need to have the fortitude to trade, but you also need to have systems in place to mitigate those potential losses. So as mentioned, it's important that you need to understand the benefits, which we talked about, the ability to generate above average profits in a short period, but it's also equally critical that you understand the inherent risk before jumping into these high volatile markets. So again, very critical that you develop a strategy that is really gonna help you capitalize on this volatility, improve your profits, but equally if not more important, you need a strategy that's going to help you reduce your losses. So let's start. I mentioned that we would take a look at that volatility index. And in essence, the volatility index, it's reflecting to you what options traders, what their collective expectations are for volatility in the S&P in the uh, upcoming 30-day period. So that's a a nice sound definition for what this index is telling you. But let's go ahead and dig in a bit further. Uh, we talked about 2017 being a rather placid period where volatility was evident rarely. And actually, it's the last 18 months that we had a an unusually low volatile period for the broader markets. So what you want to pay attention to is the position of this VIX. So relative to these uh, price points to the right-hand side. So generally around 20, uh, anytime you get into that 20 range, that is pointing toward higher volatility markets. And I, uh, if you would like, you should take a look at a longer term picture of this and you'll see during the low volatility periods that the VIX stayed very much in the mid to low teens indicating the expectation going forward of lower volatility. But given what we've seen occur since the end of uh, since the end of February of this year, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal Market Data Group, the VIX has during the first quarter of 2018 has posted its biggest quarterly rise. It's up more than 80% from the end of last year. Since a similar period in uh, the third quarter of 2011, we had a big jump in volatility. The reason at that time was because the S&P downgraded the credit rating for the US. And there also were worries about Europe's debt crisis. There was a lot going on with Greece and, and other areas of Europe. So the volatility at that time jumped. So 
we are in a very significantly highly volatile period and we talked about some of those reasons and it all has to do with uncertainty uh, will there be a trade war how high how fast will interest rates go but again you do generally want to use that 20 as your gauge and if you see that spike above that you can know that traders by and large are expecting the volatility to remain going forward over the next 30 days so we've reviewed the volatility index and that is going to be one uh, chart that I would suggest that you keep handy or certainly something that you reference so that you can keep an eye on the expectations for a continuation of this volatility. But let's take a look at another item that we mentioned in the beginning and that is just how important it is for you to be able to identify the potential direction of the market. And what we are looking at here is the S&P, it is the uh, Standard & Poor's Index, and we're looking at a daily price chart so that each bar on this chart is representing one day of price activity. And then I've also overlaid a simple, two simple moving averages. This red simple moving average, that's your 50-day moving average, and then the blue is your 200 day moving average. Now I've written a number of articles and uh, I've done quite a bit of work as far as helping people put together a system so that you can use these simple moving averages to your benefit to help you and guide you toward which direction the market may or may not be going. So for today, what we'll be doing is doing a very brief overview. Uh, for those of you that would like more information, you can contact me through my website and I can forward to you some more in-depth articles that get quite a bit more nuanced as far as helping you decide on the direction. But looking at a daily price chart, of the S&P can really be helpful when marrying it with these simple moving averages. So the first sign when you are studying the broader markets that the markets are in trouble is if you see a break below the 50-day moving average. Now we've certainly had periods, last August was one, where the markets kind of waffled and danced above and below that 50-day, but it really wasn't as concerning as now because in addition to breaking below the 50-day, this is uh, back in early February, you did get really big volume and that was telling you institutions were dumping stocks. You really needed to pay attention to that. So a crack below the 50-day is going to be your first sign that all is not well. And of course, the markets during that beginning in February, in fact, February 9th, it hit an intraday low. So when the markets, it's not necessarily breaks, this is the 200-day moving average, this blue line, but if it closes below this 200-day moving average, while the 50-day break can be serious, a break below the 200 is elevating that concern that the markets are really in trouble. A break below 200 can be very damaging because you want these key moving averages to remain in an uptrend and once a break below this 200 occurs that uptrend very clearly levels off and eventually you get this down trending effect of the 50-day moving average and that makes any recovery process more and more difficult. So here we are, the, the markets are continuing to currently find support at this 200-day moving average, so we are still in an okay period, uh, but certainly not entirely healthy. So this is one way. I've also overlaid at the bottom here what are called stochastics, and this is something for those of you that are not familiar, I would urge you to uh, take a look at the definition, but essentially stochastics are taking into account the closing price of a stock relative to the open. It's going back 10 days, and if the markets close in the upper portion of their trading range for the day, that will 
cause this stochastic to move in a positive fashion upward. So ideally, you want to capture this where the stochastics are heading up. And at this point in time, we're still rather neutral, but this overlay can be really another helpful tool for you in identifying the broader market's health or weakness. So in addition to paying attention to the broader markets, are the markets in an uptrend or a downtrend? What I wanted to do now is help you put together a system so that if you are inclined to trade these volatile markets, and it can be intraday, it could be multi-day, but if you are inclined and uh, were not absolutely adverse to the inherent risk, uh, let's start talking about how you might put together a game plan, what your morning prior to the market's opening, what that might look like. So what I've done here is I've taken an intraday chart. So this is a 15-minute line chart. And what I've plotted here is the S&P 500, that is the black line, is indicated here in the chart. And so what we're looking at here is last week's activity. And then also each day is marked here by the date that is the beginning for that particular day. And then on top of that, I have overlaid the uh, ETF for China. MCHI is the ticker symbol. Now, the reason I've done this is because we are in such a global market. This is a phenomenon that's been in place for well over 10 years, but it's becoming more and more uh, important to pay attention to. Oftentimes, it's helpful to take a peek at what has occurred overseas, and it, China being the second largest economy, it is going to have an impact. So what you will find at the open is you can spot how the Chinese stock market, as an example, has what it has done that day. Their markets close, whether you're looking at China, Hong Kong, uh, the Asian markets close anytime from between 2 and 4 p.m. East Coast time. So you're able to see not only what they've done, but how they've closed. And I don't want to overemphasize this, but it, you can see by the synergy that it can be one of several helpful clues for you to uh, potentially see what may or may not occur in the US markets based on what's happened overseas. So let's move on. Uh, what I've done here is in addition to having the S&P is your black line and China ETF is the red, down here at the very bottom, I put the European, uh, this is the most popular European ETF, it's Vanguard's uh, VGK is the ticker symbol. And so you can also see synergy between the European markets and the US. Now, the US markets, when they first open, Europe is still active, but at the very least, you can take a look and get a feel for how those markets have done. Uh, because more recently there has been quite a bit of synergy globally as far as uh, what is occurring there and what may occur here in the U.S. And so let's move on to some other pre-market preparation that you can take to help decide whether you want to be involved in the market for that upcoming day. Are there certain groups that are going to be of interest to you. So what I've done quite simply is put the logos out for these five different websites that I have found to be quite useful. Uh, some of you may have others, and if you do, I would expect, uh, I'm pardon me, <laughs> I would prompt you to um, put that in the uh, question area and share some of your some of the services, some of the ways that you might stay on top of pre-market activity um, that help you, guide you. So certainly you'll want to look at the futures. Uh, what, how, what are futures traders? Uh, are they looking for the markets to trade down or up? But a lot of these services that I mentioned here have free alerts. So MarketWatch, uh, they have one or two experts with, that are constantly prowling, telling you what happened overseas, telling you what to be on the lookout. You're going to want to know what 
uh, economic reports are due to be released. Oftentimes that can be impactful, certainly if the Federal Reserve is meeting. So uh, all of these different websites are going to have these pre-market headlines that are going to tell you if a particular company is due to report uh, anything of import or importance that will help direct you in your trading. So this is another stop along the way for you uh, prior to the market's opening. Uh, sometimes the markets will uh, will take a look at an intraday market chart. Sometimes they'll gap up uh, and you may think that you've missed the move, but uh, more recently when we have these intraday swings, uh, again this past week, well 2% almost 3% intraday swings, uh, oftentimes those gap up or down are really only just the beginning. It's not like last year when the markets would gap up and then they would trend sideways for the most part for the rest of the day. So paying attention to these headlines is going to be another way. So let's take a look. What I did want to point out to you now at this time is looking at intraday charts and using these charts as a guide for you. So what we're looking at here is a 15-minute price chart of LAM Research, LRCX. This is a heavyweight semiconductor technology stock and very much in line with the markets uh, and even perhaps more so. A lot of these faster growing tech stocks are going to move quite a bit faster than the broader markets, but you can really see how volatile these broader markets have been. This is taking us back to the latter part of March 21st into, uh, I believe, the close today. So you can see that each one of these bars is representing 15 minutes of price activity. And then these lines here are delineating the different days. So again, LRCX, a 15-minute price chart. Now here we are looking at that very same intraday price chart. But what I've done is I've gone ahead and overlaid some indicators that I have found to be very, very useful as a tool in guiding you. So now first you have a you have an opinion on the broader markets, whether they are heading up or down. From there, you've done your work as far as what's ahead for the markets for that day, what has occurred overseas. All of this is going to help give you some confidence and guide you in your trading decisions. But now let's drill down to an individual stock. So these blue uh, these blue vertical lines quite simply are delineating uh, our one day from the next, but for our work here, they are also delineating a shift in the sentiment for the broader markets, uh, and not just sentiment, but certainly uh, in the direction. So in this upper quartile here, I've put, many of you may have heard me talk about the RSI. That's your relative strength indicator. And so what we were paying attention to here is this dashed line. So not only do you want to pay attention to the slope of this RSI, this is a negative slope, but even more importantly is the actual position. As it crosses below that net neutral, we're now in negative territory. So what you want to do is then scroll down and take a look at these key moving averages. So on the 15 minute price chart, I've put an eight and a 13 simple moving average. Some of you may have others that work better for you. I've under, uh, exponential moving averages can be powerful for intraday, but for today's work, I've put uh, the eight and the tw uh, 13 time period on this chart. So what we're looking at is the shorter term, which is your blue, that's the eight simple moving average, and the red is the longer term 13. As the shorter term crosses below the longer term, that is known as a death cross. So now we have two signals that are telling us this stock could very well be poised to go lower. Moving down just a bit further, I've overlaid the MAC D, moving average convergence divergence. And for those of you who are not familiar with these uh, indicators, I do have other 
uh, courses, other work that addresses this. So um, without going into further detail, but I did want you to get a feel and a sense for how powerful overlaying these indicators can be. So you can see the RSI. So we've gotten actually four different signals that this stock could very well be poised to go lower. So indeed, LRCX does trade lower. This is two days. And to keep you in that trade for longer, you'll want to pay attention to the position of this RSI. You can see where it had periods where uh, this would be construed as potentially positive, the shorter term going up through the longer term. But paying attention to this would keep you in the trade, as would the fact that the MACD, this also has a net neutral, it's in negative territory as well. So let's take a look at what a reversal would look like. Now, this is taking us to March 26th. The stock opened. It gapped up on the open, but you want to pay attention to this crossover, black line up through the red signal line, your RSI going up above this net neutral. Quite frankly, the stock really did not do a whole lot on this particular day. This was a rather relatively quiet day for the broader markets, but let's take a look at the significant shift and telling you that this potential uptrend has failed. So we have the RSI trending negatively, death cross on your moving average, and then a negative crossover signal on the MACD. So ideally, hopefully you are getting a sense of just how powerful it is to have these overlays. One thing on the MACD I wanted to point out to you in these intraday charts, it will give you what I call an early signal. This is that positive crossover that I talked about, but when you cannot marry that with other indicators also flashing positive, you are uh, advised to not take the trade. Ideally, you want to be able to marry this positive MACD with the other characteristics that we spoke of earlier. You want at least two of the three, ideally all three, signals flashing so that it will give you that confidence to uh, get into that trade. So also, what I wanted to point out to you, and I apologize, I don't have a header for this particular one, but it's easily explainable. What we're looking at here is a line chart, and it's the very same time period that we've just been viewing in the two prior charts, LRCX 15-minute price chart. And what I've done here is overlaid the semiconductor index. So for every stock that is out there, each stock is assigned a sector for starters, and the primary reason for stocks being assigned to a sector is because uh, for investors to be able to assess group movements. The markets, depending on the economy, where we are, they do move in tandem. And so while this LAM research is part of technology, the sub grouping within technology is semiconductors. So you want to see, you can ideally with this visual see how closely a stock is married to the group that it's a part of. So this red line is LRCX and then the black line is the semiconductor index. This is a widely followed index because semiconductor stocks tend to move quickly. They, they can be, when they are in a positive period, they're fast growers, they move faster. So uh, by paying attention not only to the individual stock, you'll want to know how are those other stocks in the broader grouping behaving. So let's go ahead and move forward because what I wanted to show you next is a daily chart. So you're not going to want to look at an intraday chart to give you guidance on the broader industry group. You will want to look at a longer term chart. So we're looking at a daily chart of that semiconductor index. And what I wanted to point out to you here is very, very similar to the broader markets. If you see a break below 50, it's indicating that in this case, the semiconductor index 
is uh, in a period of difficulty. Uh, likewise, this group did falter with the broader markets in early February, but surprisingly, uh, Semiconductor and other in uh, those that adhere or those that subscribe to my newsletter were very, very well aware of the fact that semiconductors, software, and hardware stocks were really not paying attention to the broader market. Um, so those uh, in investors were able to take advantage of this move. But let's take a look here at how you can use a group chart to help as another overlay to guide your investing. So what we are looking at here is another break below that 50-day moving average. And this is looking at uh, last Friday. And then again this week, another sharp break below the 50. So really it's indicating that the entire group is uh, suffering. It's having a difficult period uh, currently. So it's now currently below that key 50 day moving average. So the way I would use this is when you see rally attempts, uh, LRCX, let's see if I can go back to that prior price chart. Go back one more. Um, here is today's action in LRCX and you can see that the stock did indeed have a very healthy, I believe it was up over 3% at one point today and you may uh, be inclined to pay that, uh, play that trade but for those of you again that are more adverse to the potential inherent risk, looking at this you may hesitate because the semiconductor index, you're not going to have the uh, power of strength in the index behind you similar to this period. So this is just another overlay that's really going to help you with your decision making. You know, I talked about the possibility of using gold as a hedge during volatile times. A lot of people, you want to stay fully invested or perhaps only take partial profits, and you're looking for a way to uh, mitigate the potential downside in these volatile markets. So what I've done here is this is a daily price chart and again it is a line chart so it's taking you back to the end of July of 2017 so this black line is your gold uh, ETF and the ticker symbol is GLD for those of you that are interested in following uh, gold in this fashion and then the red line is the S&P 500 so what we are looking for as uh, with any hedge, when you see, for instance, this is the S&P 500, you're seeing that in an uptrend. Ideally, you want that hedge to be going in the opposite direction. And what I wanted to point out here is that, in fact, uh, gold has not been a good hedge against the U.S. broader markets, and that's been since about 2015, so over two years now. Uh, using gold as a hedge has not been effective. We get a little bit of a divergence here where as the broader markets dropped, gold uh, started to rise, which brought that question up uh, from several uh, subscribers to my newsletter, is gold a hedge? But I will tell you historically, it has not proven to be a good hedge. So what I did want to point out to you is using that very same GLD ETF ticker symbol, uh, what you will see is uh, with this particular price chart, I've overlaid the Japanese yen. So what you can see here is a much more correlated trade. Uh, the yen and gold has been very much more in tandem. Uh, that has everything to do with uh, interest rates. So there's your correlation uh, for gold. So let's take a look at some conclusions uh, based on today's uh, what we've been reviewing here. 
I talked about this in the beginning, but it definitely bears repeating. When you are, and it's not just in volatile periods, it's during any period, but even more important during volatility, is you have to have an exit strategy for your trading. Whether it's a stop loss, it has to be a number that you're comfortable with, and you do need to stick with it, because otherwise you will be whipped around like a rag doll, for lack of a better analogy. Uh, so you will want to have that exit strategy. Also, we talked about using the broader market's direction to help guide you in your investment decisions. And that's not just the broader market. You're also going to want to pay attention to the group that a given market is a part of as part of your decision making. And then stay on top of where the strength are or weakness is in the markets to guide your decisions. And we kind of reviewed that briefly where uh, the semiconductors and other technology stocks really were not paying any attention to the broader market weakness. That was a pocket of strength that you could have uh, taken advantage of. So you are going to want to stay on top of where the strength is. And that's going to be uh, strength is identified by groups that are going up despite broader markets declining. And uh, that's one way to certainly easily signal where the strength is. And likewise, weakness on days when the markets rally, those areas of the markets that do not participate are going to be viewed as weak. So uh, I wanted to briefly explain this to you, and then we'll go ahead and get into any questions that you might have. But this is that special offer that I mentioned to you. And what you are looking at here, uh, this is an offer for an audio course complete with marked up charts. And it's going to help you take advantage of sector rotation. And sector rotation has been rather prevalent, certainly over the last six to eight months. We've seen various industry groups come in and out of favor. Uh, energy looked super good going into the end of last year. You can tell, is it coming back into favor? Is it not? So this course is designed to help you spot sector rotation help you tell what sectors are currently in favor. And again, this is the kind of overlay that's going to really help you with trading volatility as well. You're going to want to pay, be able to know whether the sector that that stock is a part of, is it exhibiting strength or weakness uh, as one of the ways to, uh, again, guide your investing. So there is a link in the... Uh, question or actually it's in the chat box so for those of you uh, this normally does sell for 97 you can access it today for only nine dollars so I would urge you to take advantage of this offer it's really going to make a difference for you as far as giving you that extra edge that extra overlay that a lot of people really aren't aware how critical it is and um, let me go ahead and see if I can expand this box. And uh, someone mentioned that it's not in there. So let me go ahead and see if I can go ahead. And um, I had thought that I had put it in the chat box earlier, but I went ahead and re-presented it there for those of you that are interested. Uh, again, it's a, it's a great offer. Um, one time. Um, so let's take a look at some of these questions. Um, yeah, Bob is talking about uh, he loves the volatility for intraday trading and how these technicals that we reviewed really can uh, keep you either in or out of these stocks. You're going to want to know these overlays. And then also, uh, T. Kamada was talking about the death cross, and we did review the relevance of that death cross as one of three indications that are negative for a stock. That's when that shorter term key moving average is crossing below the longer term. Uh, that is viewed as your death cross. Uh, Chris had connectivity issues. Yes, you will be able to watch a recording of the webinar later. This will be sent out. Um, Bob is 
was also talking about, oh, thank you. Okay, so I mentioned to you that uh, before we had that one page where there is an ability to get pre-market updates, whether it's headlines, what to anticipate going forward for that day, uh, a way to help set up your system going into markets if you are interday trading. And Bob mentioned that there is a website called shortsqueeze.com. Com. And Bob, I appreciate that because we've seen the markets have super strong rallies. This past Monday would be a prime example where uh, apparently a lot of the buying was short covering following last Friday's huge drop. And then uh, thank you again. Bob has another. It's, I believe, clm.viz. And then another one is... Uh, Market Smith. Now, Market Smith is more of a charting service, but also, um, if you want the economic calendar, it's suggested to look at Forex Factory. And then AutoChart.com is another one that Bob is suggesting. Thank you for all of that. I think it's wonderful as a community when traders and investors share their insights. Uh, can be very, very helpful and powerful. And Another question here is, uh, you look at the foreign markets as a possible head up, heads up, uh, because the foreign markets are ahead of the U.S. markets. Yes, that's precisely it. So, uh, and oftentimes, uh, I'm out here on the West Coast, but starting at about 4 p.m., you, for those of you that are really market geeks, you can even see how the overseas markets are opening. Um, and a lot of the Bloomberg news services and uh, will will help keep you on top of that is is uh, as well. And Rosa, I apologize, the link is still not working, so I can go ahead. Uh, let me see if I can go ahead and paste that in again. And. Uh, Robert had a question, is it a book? No, it is not a book. This offer is for an audio course and it goes through in great detail as far as, again, uh, the various sectors and how to use sector rotation to your advantage. And I went ahead and tried to input that link again, but uh, for those of you, you can reach out through my website and I'll be glad to send that link out to you. Um, someone else, oh, T. Kamada, he had a question. Do you think Zero Hedge is a good information source? Uh, Zero Hedge is is good. It's uh, uh, What I like about them is they do provide periodically uh, access to institutional research reports that you might not otherwise have access to as a self-directed investor. But uh, I, I enjoy it as yet another overlay, but not something that I put into my daily routine. Uh, it's more of an interesting type of uh, outside source of information for me, as well as a solid one. And I, uh, there was a question, um, Rosa, my website is meminvestmentresearch.com. That's located on the lower right side of this slide so you can see it. And then uh, there was another example that uh, I'm not quite familiar how to... Uh, Chris, I am so sorry about this link. The shopping cart is empty. I'm truly sorry. I, it was tested before this, and I usually have someone else on this uh, webinar with me whose sole job is to make sure that uh, this runs smoothly, but they are not uh, part of this webinar today. So again, if you could go ahead and reach out to me, I'll be more than happy to have someone send you that link immediately. Um, and then, oh, okay, thanks, Bob. He said that uh, you can use a service like Snagit. Um, that's a $29 cost. It allows you to do a screenshot. I would tell you that Jing, J-I-N-G, is free. And what that allows you to do, no matter what you're looking at, you can take a screenshot 
of that link and then go ahead and put that link into your browser. I hate to add that extra step for you, but thank you, Bob. That is a wonderful idea, um, taking a screenshot for later referral. That's, that's actually a wonderful idea, and then you'll have it. And I will work hard at getting the technology down so that you can um, more instantaneously have access to this offer. And uh, for any other questions, I'm happily uh, willing to answer. But it looks like um, which email should we use? Uh, you can use either, um, I would say, support at the memgroup.com is one way to get immediate response. Uh, the other webs the other uh, email is Mary Ellen at the memgroup.com. So either of those emails will get you an answer uh, quite quickly. And um, I think uh, yeah, sure, Cal, you're welcome. And I think we are good to go. And Bob. Uh, thank you. Happy Easter to you and your family as well. Uh, I appreciate your your appreciation. <laughs> um, so I think we're good here. Unless I, uh, I'll hang in for a little bit longer, and if anyone else has any questions, we can review those. Uh, Robert wanted to know how often do I have webinars. Uh, you know, it's it's at least once every two weeks. Uh, periodically, it will be each and every week. So it's um, it kind of varies. Uh, Pro Trader Strategies. I partner with them. They're a wonderful site, and they've been very very helpful as far as uh, allowing me to use their system for these webinars. So they are who will keep you updated on uh, any upcoming webinars. And uh, let's see, oh, thanks, Robert, super. And then it is a $9 promo instead of 29, and I, I hope that that's what's showing up. I know that our marketing team, we're always doing different promotions, so uh, hopefully they were able to update this in time for this webinar. Oh, Jean, yes, hi, it does say 97 regularly, that's correct. Uh, but it is regularly, but we do other promos where we, instead of that 97, we offer it for 29. Today we actually brought it down even further with an eye toward being able to help people tremendously during this current time period to encourage those to take advantage. And Rosa, your your thank you. I mean, you're welcome. Yes, it is downloadable instantly, Chris. You'll get the link sent to you immediately, and you can take a look at it right away. The course. <laughs> 